Let's devote this video to the four horsemen. And no, I'm not talking about woo, Ric Flair and his faction of miscreants that ruled the wrestling world back in the late 70s and early 80s. Although they were quite awesome, we're not talking about that four horsemen. What we're talking about are four specific fitness tools that were popular in the golden era of fitness, which roughly ran from 1880 to 1920. Believe it or not, these tools are still used to this day, and you use them all the time, you didn't even realize it, at least you use some of them. They consist of the medicine ball, dumbbells, Indian clubs, and a health wand. Of those four tools, you're probably most familiar with the dumbbells and the medicine ball. So let's just review some of these tools. This is my fancy dumbbell. This is actually called a power block. This is adjustable, and you can put these slats in the sides and make this light or heavy, any way you want. It's about 20 pounds right now, as is. This is just a weird looking dumbbell. It's kind of square shaped and rectangular. Dumbbells come in all shapes and sizes, really. They have adjustable ones, they have the circular ones, they have ones that are hex shaped, and they have those ones that are rubber coated and everything in between. Interestingly, way back in the history of exercise, golden era fitness, they also came in wooden as well. And they kind of had a fused handle and these sides that were kind of rounded. You may have seen those. And they also came in cast iron as well, which were kind of shaped the same way. It was a dumbbell and they kind of had these rounded ends on them. So these tools were used back in history and they were used a little differently than today. A lot of the motions and a lot of the exercises were performed in circular patterns or figure eight patterns as well. So for example, a dumbbell could have been held like this and what we know as a bicep curl is just doing this, right? Okay. Now back in the old days, they would use dumbbells in different ways. They would hold two of them and spin them kind of like this in a circular fashion. And then, they would go like this and bring them up around the body like this in different patterns. They would take them, move them in circular motions like this, and then they would incorporate two at a time in circular motions and go like this. They'd turn the body in different directions like this while they're holding dumbbells. Very interesting, right? So that's a good segue to go into the next tool I'm going to talk about, which are Indian clubs. These babies right here. So as you notice, they kind of look like bowling pins. And that's what a lot of people ask me what I'm doing when I'm out in fields in summertime spinning these around in circular patterns. They're like, what are those bowling pin things you're using out there? Well, they're actually called Indian clubs. Much like the dumbbells were used kind of in the circular fashion, Indian clubs are all about circles, spirals, and figure eights. So hopefully we've got enough space in here. A pattern like this is called an outward heart shape. So it's spun around in a circle, just like that. And then you can do wrist circles, inward and outward. You can go behind the back like this and do a hip, um, a hip reel. And you can do all kinds of fancy patterns. You've probably seen some of my videos with Indian clubs in the past. But these tools also very cool because you can do all these different unique circles, spirals, and figure eights with them. They're super therapeutic for your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder. And they also improve your posture as well. So that is a little lesson on the Indian clubs. The medicine ball right here. These are usually circular or they're kind of oblong shaped. This is a hard rubber medicine ball. This one can actually bounce when you slam it down on the ground. You can move this in all kinds of different directions and patterns like this. And again, back in the old days, a lot of the drills were done in circles, spirals, and figure eights. So you can do things like this, halo, and then you can come and do figure eights like this. And then you can do big circles. You can do motions like this. And these motions I'm doing, you can do them with the medicine ball, with the Indian clubs, or the dumbbells all rolled into one, by the way. Because in history, they trained differently. They worked on posture, they worked on fitness, they worked on very mobile joints. They wanted to incorporate multiple muscle groups at once. They wanted to create really fit bodies that were gonna stand up the test of time in times of battle, in times of war, and in times of famine and stuff like that. So the exercise patterns were way different back then than they are now. They were not linear. They weren't like bicep curls. Everything had an incorporation of the body in as many patterns as possible. So keep that in mind. Nowadays, when you're training, use some of those principles from the past into modern day. So the medicine ball, by the way, here's an interesting story. People sometimes ask me, why is it called the medicine ball? Well, here is the interesting story. I believe it was Socrates or it was one of those old Greek philosophers who was also a physician. Hippocrates. It was Hippocrates. So... He was working with patients back in the old day. He's one of the, the founding fathers of, of medicine as you know it today. And a lot of times people would come to him and he would try to heal them as quickly as possible. They'd be sick, then they would get weak, they couldn't do anything for a while, and he figured, I need to figure out a way to try to get these people healthy again and get them built up, build up more strength, especially in the core region, also known as the abdomen back then. So 
He would take bladders from animals, dry them out, and he would stuff dirt and rocks and fragments of materials laying around inside the bladders, and then he would sew them together, and he would hand them to the patient. And he'd have the patients do sit-ups, lift it above their head like this, move it around in different positions, and then start doing squats and lifting it up in the air and throwing it. And that was the first known medicine ball back in the day because he used those bladders to form somewhat of the shape of a ball and he used it as medicine. So you can go to your next coffee clatch or party and tell all your friends and family members that story and see how many people you can impress. So that is why it's called the medicine ball. And these also come, I said hard rubber, this one is, but they also come in like soft material too that's filled with material where you can take it and slam it on the ground and it just kind of stays there because it's kind of soft on the outside. Those are called slam balls. So the medicine ball is very versatile and can be used in a lot of areas. So there you go. There's your history lesson on that. Lastly, health wand. The true health wand is about five feet long, one inch in diameter. This is, I believe it's hickory if I'm not mistaken. It might be pine. This tool is one of my favorite of all time. And a lot of people don't even know what the heck it is. Really, you don't need an actual five foot perfectly uniform health wand to utilize this to get the benefits. You can use a broomstick. You can use a piece of PVC pipe. You can use a stick out in the woods. It doesn't really matter as long as it's long enough and it fits your arms. So this tool was used in a very therapeutic type way. So one of the drills you can use it for is holding it here and just opening a gate like this and bringing it back down and bringing it back up. And then you can lift it above your head. You can tuck it in like this, turn it around, bring it down. You can bring it up over your body like this in a circular fashion, back and forth. You can do twists like this. You can do motions like this. These were amazing tools that were used mainly in a rehabilitative way. I have probably 100 exercises I've created with this when I've worked with people that have had shoulder issues and elbow issues and wrist issues. You can turn them in like this to get good stretches with it. There's just all kinds of stuff you can do with the health wand. The, um, let me think about this. I believe it was China adopted something like this years ago and it was called Jangan, if I'm not mistaken. Forgive me for the pronunciation and the spelling for those of you that, are, that know what I'm talking about. But the tool is used more so in a rehabilitative way, but also to improve range of motion and flexibility in the wrist, elbow, and shoulder. And this was one of the four horsemen. This was used all the time in exercises and warm-ups and stuff like that for athletes and everyone in between. So if you don't have one of these, I highly suggest you get it. And let me know if you have any questions about it because I can guide you on some cool exercises with the health wand. I used to do entire workouts with this with some of my clients in years past. And you can incorporate it with some stretches like this, which is perfectly good for the upper body and the spine. And you can do it in all kinds of circular motions like I just demonstrated before. So to recap, we've got the four horsemen. They consist of the health wand, the medicine ball, eating clubs, dumbbells. They were used in a non-traditional way back in the old days, but they're still used today in a lot of circles, especially dumbbells and medicine balls. Indian clubs have made a moderate comeback, but I don't know too many people that know much about the health wand. This is one of my favorite tools in the whole wide world. So if you are a history geek like I am when it comes to health and fitness, look these tools up, get a little more education on them, start integrating them into your daily practice. And as usual, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Till next time, have a great day.